Price, Growth Senior, Ella, Cronin, Kenny and Sterling. Legendary names in the world of rugby league in what was considered a successful era for the Parramatta Eels. Who was to know on that Sunday, the 18th of September 1986, this team at the pinnacle of the rugby league world would be deprived of any premiership success for the next 36 years. This is a story of despair, missed opportunity and die-hard fans that have been consistently let down. Let's take a step back through rugby league history. For an understanding of how para fans have had it, we need some context. Going back to its founding in 1947, Para were woeful. Finding little to no success, they would win only 35 of 180 matches between 1952 and 1961. They would win the wooden spoon eight times. That's right, eight times in nine years. The Eels were outsiders in the New South Wales Rugby League. Unwanted to begin with, being knocked back for over a decade before being accepted into the competition. They lacked resources and were filled with amateur and park players, whilst other sides fielded teams full of representative talent. In their first 25 years of existence, they would come last 11 times, with a single piece of silverware being a pre-season cup final in 1975. It would be 1976 though where things would start to turn for the Eels. They had only been admitted to the New South Wales Rugby League in 1947. This would be the same year that the Parramatta Eels were introduced, and Parra were yet to experience A year later, we would see the emergence of Ray Price and Mick Cronin, and the Eels running it back capturing their first minor premiership and a grand final date against the Dragons, and would result in a replay the following week in which the Eels would lose 22-0. This habit of just falling short would foreshadow much of the Eels club history. The 1980s was a special time to be a Parramatta Eels fan. This was considered the golden era. Under the tutelage of Jack Gibson, a coach that had already had three premierships to his name, the young crop of Price, Growth Senior, Ella, Cronin, Kenny and Sterling would become household names. Ray Price, a dual code star, playing for both the Wallabies and the Kangaroos was a hard nosed lock who was as tough as they came. Growth Senior, recognised as one of the greatest wingers ever, had a nasty fend and electric acceleration. Steve Eller and Mick Cronin formed one of the more lethal centre pairings in rugby league history, whilst Brett Kenny and Peter Sterling made for a halves pairing, both off-the-cuff players who were magicians with the ball, like absolute geniuses. All of these players would represent their state and Australia by career's end, and many were recognised in the 100 greatest players in rugby league history in 2008. Before the arrival of coach Jack Gibson in 1981, the Parramatta Eels were considered pretenders and with no premiership experience. Sterling was only three years into his career and was considered unpolished, labelled as a hog in the early grades. It was only under Gibson's guidance we saw him begin to grow. The Eels in their debut season under Gibson would reach the grand final after finishing third in the regular season. In a matchup against Newtown led by Tommy Radonikus, Brett Kenny stole the show, contributing two tries with this sealer at the end. The fans went wild in celebration, tearing and burning down the grandstand as the Eels had ended their 34 year drought. In 1982, the side would have the most successful regular season in club history with 21 wins and a minor premiership. A grand final rematch against now main rivals the Manly Warringa Seagulls would follow. A dominating first half that saw tries to Kenny, Ella, Growth Senior and Neil Hunt secured the game as the Eels held on to go back to back. By the 1983 season, the Eels were a juggernaut backed by a huge dedicated fan base that sold out their home games every week. Again facing the Seagulls, Parramatta's forwards led by Price and Peter Wynn would destroy Manly and with another try double in his third consecutive grand final from Brett Kenny, the Parramatta Eels would three-peat, a remarkable feat. This would make Gibson the joint most successful coach in rugby league history as he completely turned around the franchise. Jack Gibson would leave the club that off-season moving to Cronulla. This would bring in John Money, who would lead the Eels to qualify for their fourth consecutive grand final. But they would fall to the Dogs 6-4 in what was a tight affair and the start of a new rivalry. The Eels, despite the setback, stayed competitive, returning to another final series, this time falling short again in the prelim against the Bulldogs. 1986 would again match the Eels against the Bulldogs for a grand final rematch, with another low-scoring affair. In what was a Herculean price to retire at the pinnacle of the sport, but would ultimately end the dynasty. As the seasons passed, the Eels were unable to replace these generational stars. During this downward period, the Eels would fail to make the finals from 1987 all the way through to 1996, a complete fall off for a club that was once completely dominant.
the Eels would survive the infamous Super League War entering into the inaugural season of the NRL. The 1997 season was the first time in 11 years that the Eels had seen any sort of success. Under new coach Brian Smith, he had turned around what seemed like a hopeless situation as they reached their first final series. The 98 and 99 final series are the ones that really set a precedent and unfortunately it wasn't a good one. Parramatta would lead their arch nemesis, the Canary Bankstown Bulldogs, 18-2 in the preliminary final, only 10 minutes away from a grand final berth for a deserving side who was strong all regular season. Those next 10 minutes can only be described as a collapse of historic proportions. The Eels would concede 16 points in the final 10 minutes. They would go on to lose 32 to 20 in overtime, a devastating result, but still a successful season. Captained by Dean Pay and with stars like Jason Smith, Nathan Kalis, Jim Dimmick, and Jared McCracken, many expected them to go back and return the following year. They would return, and this time it was against newcomers, the Melbourne Storm. Expectations were high for the blue and gold, coming off a second place finish in the regular season, they were favourites and expected to go through to the grand final. Leading at half time 16 to 6, the Eels would suffer again a second half collapse, conceding 14 straight points. The Eels looked like a side that did not know how to win in the pressure situations. The 2000 prelim lost this time against the Bulldogs would only confirm this theory, and although they were outsiders for this specific game, finishing 7th in the regular season, it was more heartbreak for Eels fans. This brings us to 2001. If the previous years were considered collapses and disappointing, 2001 is recognised as a severe choke. The Eels had ushered in a new crop of talent with the damaging representative forwards of the Hindmarsh brothers, Michael Vella, Jason Kalis, and Andrew Ryan. Young stars like Jamie Lyon, Brett Hodgson, and Luke Burt, plus the recruitment of veteran half Jason Taylor, meant the side had talent across the field. This was shown in their minor premiership winning season, as the side won 20 regular season games, finishing with the best offensive and defensive records in the sport. No side had scored more points in a single season. It was Parramatta's premiership to lose. A demolition job of the Warriors in the qualifying final was a great start. A prelim win in which they would hold off a Broncos side that only had eliminated them a year prior was even better. It seemed possibly the Eels had overcome their previous shortcomings, as they would find themselves in their first grand final since 1986. Matched up against immortal Andrew Johns of the Newcastle Knights, it was a match that they would come out flat in and would trail 24 0 at halftime. They put up a valiant fight back but would ultimately fall short, losing 30 24. Ben Kennedy and Joey Johns would label the Eels nervous and stiff, rocking up to the pre-final breakfast in suits. Parramatta would suffer a slight fall off the following years, until returning to the prelim finals in 2005, off the back of a bonkers rookie year from Tim Smith, who had a record 40 try assists. This club's second minor premiership meant that they were yet again considered the favourites. Tahu, Kalis, Riddell, the Smiths, and superstar Nathan Hindmarsh had led the way. A season-ending injury for Hindmarsh in round 26 would hurt the club's chances, but they were still considered favourites against a young cowboy side. In true para fashion, they would come up short, this time being shut out at home, 29-0. This led to the resignation of head coach Brian Smith, ending what was a successful but disappointing error. 2007 would prove much more of the same, another prelim final visit, with a team full of representative talent losing again this time to the Storm their fifth prelim final loss in nine years. For some context, on this premiership drought in 1986, they had the legendary winger Eric Groth. Well, that Eric Groth had now become a senior, and his son Eric Groth Jr. was playing at an origin level, now on the Parramatta Eels. We were going through generations and the Eels were still without a premiership. The fans had started to feel hopeless. They needed saving, and well, enter Jared Hayne. Labelled as the most gifted Parramatta player since the great Brett Kenny, Hain was no joke. Already a Dalian Rookie of the Year winner and Brad Fittler medalist by 2007, he was the Eels fans' hope of finally breaking that drought. They would not take too long to receive the ultimate chance to do just that in 2009. Sitting in 14th in round 18 with a total of 5 wins, the Eels sat at $151 for the NRL Premiership. A monumental resurgence led by Jared Hayne, who would win seven Man of the Match awards in a row, whilst his side won seven of the last eight remaining games, secured the Eels the final spot in the finals. Many expected them to bow out in round one facing the Dragons, who had shut them out the week prior. Unexpectedly, the Eels would upset the first seed, Dragons. Winning three finals in a row booked them into the 2009 Grand Final. In what was a fairy tale, this side had captured the hearts with new faces like Daniel Mortimer, Fui Fui Moi Moi, Kristen Inu, and Jared Hayne, while stalwarts like Luke Burke, Nathan Hindmarsh, and Nathan Kalis remained. 
The narratives were plenty, a fullback matchup of the century between Slater versus Hayne, or the final chance of silverware for Hindmarsh and Kalis. In what was a David vs Goliath battle, the Storm proved too much, fighting off an Eels comeback. A final score of 23-16 to meant the Eels fairy tale run had ended. And if that wasn't enough, the Melbourne Storm would be found guilty of cheating the salary cap that year. The Storm would be stripped of the Premiership, but it was not awarded to the Eels, it was just vacated. This meant even though the Eels lost, they really didn't. It felt like the club was cursed. The following period could be regarded as the low for the side. Reckless management from the top put the club in a deep hole. In 2012 and 2013, the Eels would receive back-to-back wooden spoons with a total of 11 wins over the next two seasons. It would get worse when the Eels were hit in 2016 with a salary cap sanction for breaching the salary cap themselves by the NRL. Receiving a 12-point penalty, a $1 million fine, and the deregistering of five officials at the club. Comically, the sanction referred to the previous five seasons in which the Eels did not make the finals once. Nine years removed from the grand final, the Eels had only made the finals once, been through three coaches and received the wooden spoon three times. This team was now under the coaching of Brad Arthur, who had taken over in 2014, and although the team had only made one finals appearance in 2017, he had the club slowly turning a corner. Following a wooden spoon in 2018, Arthur's job was on the line, and with a year left on his contract, something needed to be done. Arthur would manage to pull the Eels off the bottom in a season as Para, led by the new core of Clint Gutherson, Mitch Moses, Junior Parlour, Mike Acevo, Sean Lane and Reid Marnie, stormed into the finals in fifth spot. After an elimination demolishing of the Brisbane Broncos, they would fall in the semis to the heavily favoured Melbourne Storm. It was a great bounce back for the club, and with the new stadium and players, things looked on the up. 2020 followed, and with the arrival of Regan Campbell, Gillard, and Ryan Madison, the Eels had now formed one of the more formidable forward packs in the competition. Guided by the skillful Dylan Brown and Mitchell Moses, the Eels looked like premiership favourites at one point, starting the year undefeated over the first five rounds. They would peter off slightly and finish in third, but were considered favourites still, but would yet again fall in the semis, this time in straight sets to the Bunnies in Melbourne. In 2021, it was more of the same, with another great start to the year before again fizzling out and falling to six on the table. Making it to the semi-finals again, Parra would fight valiantly against the Penrith Panthers, but would lose 6-8 in the semi-finals. Expectations had flipped quickly at Parramatta. No longer were they the joke of the competition, but now had critics labelling them as pretenders. With their three consecutive semi-final exits suffering from possibly their own success, Brad Arthur was no longer helping them fight the spoon, but trying to win his side at Premiership. For many, 2022 needed to be the year, and well... 2022 looked like much of the same, a strong 4-1 start followed by inconsistent play where the Eels would lose to both the Tigers and Bulldogs. A finals team for sure, but nothing more. Pundits had already written off the Eels, labelling them as pretenders, with the side falling to 7th by round 22. The Eels season wasn't perfect and there were three results that stuck out. Back-to-back victories against reigning premiers the Penrith Panthers, with a round 9 performance handing Penrith their first home loss since 2019. Parramatta would be the only side to hand a full-strength Penrith team losses for the entire year as a rivalry had now been formed. The final round win over the Storm in what was a direct battle for fourth place was also a crucial victory as it guaranteed them a second chance. That second chance was needed as they would lose in the first round to Penrith but bounce back against the Canberra Raiders thumping them. This put them in the prelim final for the first time since 2009. In what was a controversial game, Parra would get the rub of the green with a forward pass try, but Parra fans will say they were deserving of some good karma. Sean Lane, Campbell Gillard and Isaiah Papali'i had been particularly strong in 2022 and proved the difference in the prelim, as Parramatta booked their place in the grand final. Brad Arthur, who'd had his critics only a few weeks prior, had got his side to the big dance. The pretenders had now turned to legitimate contenders. 36 years between drinks, a total of 9 coaches, and some 380 players had come and gone since their 1986 title. The Parramatta Eels now only sit 80 minutes away from making Australian sporting history.